Hi, and welcome to What's Happening at Tri-City Medical Center. I'm Kelly Davis, and I'm your host for this edition of What's Happening, made in collaboration with KOCT, North County's channel, and the Tri-City Medical Center. Our goal is to keep you informed about health issues, events, and services at your local medical center and provide you with information on a healthy lifestyle. Joining us on our show today is Dr. Gehan D'Souza, a cosmetic reconstructive surgeon who is here to talk about facial aging, breast augmentation, and migraine surgery. Welcome to the show, Dr. D'Souza. Thank you, Kelly. D'Souza. 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 Yeah. Got it. So, you know, where are you located? And I have to ask this question first. Why did you choose cosmetic surgery? Where did you go to get your training? Thank you so much for having me, Kelly. Uh, so, you know, I'm a plastic surgeon in the Carlsbad Oceanside Vista area, mm -hmm. and I serve all of uh, Southern Orange County, Northern San Diego, and the San Diego County regions. Um, you know, I've been in San Diego for the last four or five years. I uh, worked at UCSD uh, Medical Center uh, as a plastic surgeon, and I also uh, spent a year at the Cleveland Clinic and Johns Hopkins University uh, to get some of the training in plastic surgery. Fantastic, and when you went to medical school, there's so many things that you probably were interested and you could choose from. Why this particular profession? So I think plastic surgery enabled me to give uh, patients a full depth of care. You know, plastic surgeons are not like the urologist or heart doctors. We work on the entire body. And so I can do a case in the scalp the same day as a breast case and the same day as a hand case. And so it gives us a very diverse portfolio and enables us to really help patients in a very diverse set of manner. Wonderful. So what are the first questions I'd like to ask and talk about facial surgery? What are some of the signs that you of, of facial aging? So, you know, facial aging occurs in very specific set points. And once you're in your 30s and 40s, you might start to see fine lines and wrinkles, and you start to see them in the crow's feet area, you start to see them in the glabella region, you know, the number 11 lines that patients tend to see. You also start to see deepening of the nasal labial folds and deepening of the gels. And when we look at the face and we see how the face ages, the face starts to drop in a counterclockwise and a clockwise position. And so your face, basically, uh, the fat in your face starts to deflate and your face starts to drop and gets tethered by ligaments that are held to the bone in your face. And that's why you get these lines in certain areas of the face. Is it because they're trying to keep it, keep, keep holding it up? Is that what it is? It, so there's exactly, what we always say is that gravity always wins. <laughs> and so your face starts to drop in the same manner and the ligaments hold the face where they should have been. Uh -huh. but it doesn't end up working. I see, and so what are some non-operative treatments for facial rejuvenation? Of course, so you know, I think the general public knows Botox and fillers. Those are the two main non-operative treatments. The third non-operative treatment is laser rejuvenation. So when we talk about Botox and fillers and laser, they're all three different modalities used to treat different aspects of facial aging. So uh, when someone comes to you, since there's three different, say that again, there's three different mod modalities yes, of so which three are different treatments, treatments in facial aging, Botox, fillers, and laser treatments. So what would be your recommendation? I mean, why would you tell a, a client Botox over fillers? How do you choose? So it's not as cookie cutter as just telling a client one thing, second or third thing. What we end up doing is we sit down with the client, we start to see the client's goals and needs and how much time they want to have off and recover from each of these treatments. We also want to see how much work the client wants to put in each of the treatments. You know, the Botox fillers and laser each have different kind of time span of uh, recovery and cost associated with it. That's interesting that you said work. So let's take something uh, like like Botox. First of all, exactly what is it, and what is the work that you just said that's involved? Well, with Botox that? is the easiest thing. Okay. It requires no work. <laughs> so Botox is a nerve chemo de, ne, de innervator, which means what Botox does is it paralyzes muscle, and so these lines 
all over your face are formed because muscle contracts and causes the skin to contract in the same way. So if you paralyze the muscle temporarily, like Botox does, mm -hmm. it gets away the, with, it takes away those lines for a certain period of time, about three months. And I, one of the things I, some of my favorite actresses, and I will not speak their names, back in the day I really enjoyed them because of their, their facial kind of expressions. And now I see them, is it, is there a limit of when you should stop doing Botox so much? Well, or? there absolutely is a limit. There's a happy medium everybody needs to realize. And you can't just paralyze your entire face because then you end up having a very stoic, plastic kind of face. And so you need to go to a real plastic surgeon who knows how to deal with this, who's not just going to pump as much product into the face, but you need to go to somebody who has an artistic manner about them that you know can balance everything and do what's right for the patient. So there, there, so there. With Botox in particular, there's um, you would recommend there's probably a limit to keep Absolutely. going back. Absolutely. And what do the fillers do? So what the fillers we say fillers are plumper uppers. So what, what plumper uppers exactly? So what fillers do is when your face ages, your face deflates, and so the fat in your face starts to go away. So if you look at your pictures when you were younger, maybe. 15, 20 years old, your cheeks were up here, and your cheeks have kind of sagged and deflated as they kind of, as you age. And so fillers actually plump up your cheeks to a more youthful appearance. It also kind of softens some of the lines that you have in your face as far as the lines near your nose, or the lines near your jaw. And uh, comparing to Botox, that would be a little bit more work, a little bit more well, it's time? Well, it's still not a lot of work. Okay. Uh, Botox and fillers are done in the plastic surgeon's office, and it takes maybe about 5 to 10 to 20 minutes. Okay. Um, how would someone know if they're ready for this kind of treatment, a well, facelift? You, people need to realize that, you know, with Botox, fillers, and laser, that those treatments have very little downtown, downtime. With something like a facelift, the downtime is about one to two weeks, depending on how in depth of a procedure you want. So that's the question people really need to answer. They need to balance the downtime with how much effect they want. And the incisions for something like a facelift, yeah. where, where are those? So the incisions are very well hidden. People come to me all the time and are worried, number one, about the incision. But the incisions are basically disappear in a couple years. The incisions are hidden in the hairline behind this part of the ear called the tragus, behind the ear and back into the hairline as well. And so you really don't see the incisions, especially if you have long hair or if you have, you know, uh, well-placed incisions. Okay. And uh, how long typically would you say a facelift lasts? A facelift, we say we give a facelift about a 10-year warranty. <laughs> and in 10 years, you're going to come back and say, you know, my facelift looked absolutely fantastic. But you know, aging still happens after the facelift. We can't just stop the aging process with the operation. So in 10 years, we say, you know, my, my face looks better than if I didn't have the facelift, but I maybe need a little touch up. Because as you say, gravity is... Gravity always <laughs> wins. Thank you for this particular segment. And we will be right back with Dr. D'Souza to talk about breast augmentation.